What's good, crypto? I'm your host, Marvin, here to bring you the daily scoop on what's going on in crypto. Bitcoin had failed to hold the $50,000 region, dipping its Q toes into the high 48 region yesterday. We managed to close over 49,000. So where does that leave Bitcoin now? Also, let's talk about the cutie patootie with a booty, Cardano. It's it's on fire. So is it a good time to buy Cardano? Is it a good time to invest in Cardano? Well, let's have that conversation today. Monday through Friday, we come here bringing the education and all the goodness when it comes to investing in crypto to make life changing wealth. None of this is financial advice as I'm not a financial advisor. Make sure to do your own due diligence in research and make sure to follow me on Instagram like I'm showing you on the screen at Media by Marvin and on Twitter. I'd love to connect with you all. Shoot me a message. Let me know that you listen to the podcast or tune in onto the YouTubes and follow me on Twitter at Media by Marvin as well. Same handle. I'm there tweeting some of my other projects that maybe don't get a lot of love. Hashtag love be pro. It's crushing it right now. <sighs> Making me some serious cash. Loving that right now. But let's talk about what's going on in the market. Let's let's dip back in. Bitcoin killing it right now. It's doing so good. Overnight, it hit like $49,800. Um, right now, sitting at a modest $49,486. Up 5.8% on the week. Can't be mad about that. Up 43.57 on the month. And we're only down 1.9%. That's nothing. Ethereum up 2.2% on the week and up 53% on the 30 days, monthly, whatever. Um, at 3,326, love seeing Ethereum over 3,300. It was sitting back for a while, not doing much. It, it was really being like held down under 3,300, so I'm happy to see it over that. Cardano, I saw a funny tweet yesterday. It was like the sexual tension between Cardano and $3 yesterday. It was like at 296 i was like oh it's so close so close but teasing us teasing us hanging out at 289 still crushing it still up two percent on the day almost 40 percent on the week and 136 percent on the monthly killing it at a market cap of 92 billion dollars surpassing Binance coin. Binance coin was at $500 yesterday. Love seeing it up there. It had a really good run up about 15% on the week. And if we go down, we see some others. XRP lagging behind a bit. I mean, you can't be mad at a 100% increase on 30 days. Um, Dogecoin sitting down. It's down on the week, down on the daily, up on the month. And I'm going to make a separate video talking about Doge where I think Doge is going to go by the end of this bull cycle. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments below if you are a Doge holder. And Solana waking up. It was uh, hanging out at the low 70s the last couple of days, and I was thinking about pulling the trigger on Solana, but I didn't like a silly goose that I am. But $77.87, uh, $77.87, not too far from its all-time highs of 80 dollars not far at all i think solana is gonna crush 100 dollars would not be surprised at all and it would continue to go down some other ones just lagging a little bit behind uniswap uh chain link if we go down uh icp uh polygon v chain is doing pretty well actually i woke up to a surprise a v chain up 13 cents uh 13 .1363. i don't even know 13 uh 13 cents and 63 whatever cents um almost at 14 cents it was struggling to get over 13 cents so i'm really happy to see um b chain over that so really really good to see some movement i think we're going to see some explosiveness on v chain soon let's take a look at the losers uh on the daily oh those are the winners terra terra has been just tearing it up um Engine coin, ripping it. I think uh, engine coin and chilies are going to be doing pretty well today and tomorrow. We see chilies down here too. Um, they're going to be listed on Bitstamp, I think, today and tomorrow. Engine coin being, I think, today or chilies today and then engine tomorrow, one or the other. But they're being listed on a new exchange, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a good run up on those two projects. But engine coin and chilies, two that I'm really big fans of. So. Happy to see that a lot of my projects are up here crushing it. 
Um, and then let's look at the losers. Amp is down, man. Amp had a good, nice run up yesterday. It was over seven cents. Um, but man, um, not not too much. Not too. I mean, yeah, actually, the thing is. There's a couple projects that are down, but they're like a percent or two. So it's like nothing. It really is nothing. Like a lot of these are probably going to bounce back when Bitcoin bounces back. But let's take a look at what Bitcoin's doing. Let's talk about Bitcoin. Let's get back into that. Bitcoin. Let me just refresh this. Uh, we are looking at Bitcoin on the daily. Some interesting developments. As we can see here, Bitcoin not closing below. Let's take a look. It's been doing really, really well. So if we take a look here, bouncing off the high 48,000, staying above it, and recently, today and yesterday, not closing below 49,000. So yesterday, um, we closed over 49,000. The day before that, it was 50. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, we closed at 49,000. The day before that, 49,000. The day before that, 49,000. The day before that, 40. 9,000 and we've been opening like at 48,000 we're starting to open at 49,000 and I think if we can continue to close around 49,000 that's telling me the market the bulls are are holding holding strong at 49k they do not want the price to close down the bulls are trying really really hard to get us to close below 49,000 now what do I think that means I think if Bitcoin closes below 49,000 and we give in and we start seeing some daily closes under 49, more like the 48, um, I think we're going to go down a little bit, which is okay. Um, a little pullback is fine because as we can see, when Bitcoin pulls back, we see an explosive movement up, explosive movements up, pull back up, pull back up, pull back up. So if we see a little bit of a pullback, that is okay. Honestly. If we pull back, I would see some uh, support at the 48 region, just like low for uh, low 48s, high 47s. That's some good support. If we go down again, we can see some support down here at about forty-five thousand um, dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some support at forty. Um, yeah, we we'll probably go down to forty-five, and the lowest is probably gonna be. Let's take a look. The forty-three region. Um, but I really think that we're gonna hold 49,000. It's been a great area of support. We're building it, we're flipping it to support, which is really important. And I think if we can continue to build the support, do some crab sideways movement action over the next couple of days, I wouldn't be surprised if we could close over 50 and maybe close it in on 51. And I honestly think once we start seeing daily closes over $50,000, that's gonna give us enough juice and confidence to start breaking through $51,000. And I think once we break 51,000, I think we're gonna start bumping into a roadblock around 50, I would say probably around the 55 to $57,000 mark. That's probably the next one. But I think that breaking through 50,000 is gonna be a lot faster than breaking through 40,000. A lot of people have been saying that. 30 to 40 took a little bit of time. Um, that took from like July until like the middle of August. Um, 40 to 50 went by really, really fast. I mean, take a look at this. I mean, we went through 40,000 from the 16th of August. That's crazy, just to think. Um, oh, I'm sorry. From the beginning of August to about now. So in three weeks, we went through 10K. That's, that's insane. That's that's a huge move right there. Um, but I think that the next uh, area of resistance we're probably going to see is around the 57 to 50, the 55 to 57. Uh, between 51 and 55, there really isn't a lot of support um, or resistance. Just because, as you can see in the weeks prior, we really went through uh, all of this. There wasn't a lot of um, time to build the support on the weekly. Uh, so on the weekly, I'm probably going to say between 52 and 57, we're going to fly through 57 is probably going to be our area of resistance. So if we can break through 51, start closing days on the um, over 50,000, I think we're going to be in for a good run there. But something to keep an eye out. If we if we see a daily close today uh, under 49, um, 
We'll probably see a little bit of a pullback, but that's okay. We, we're maintaining such a healthy structure. I mean, look at this. Green candles all the way up, all the way up. And I'm going to talk about something, one, one more thing on uh, the weekly. Um, but you can see here we have so much good support. Um, and that's something that we really didn't have before here. Like it was just run ups, run ups, run ups. You can see here there wasn't a lot of back testing. It was straight up, straight down, up a little bit, straight up, straight down, up. So there wasn't as much support. Whereas here, we're taking our time, we're building that support, we're going up and down, testing, back testing, back testing. And that's what you want to see in a healthy, healthy market, in my opinion. Um, but I think that even we've got a pullback. I think 46 is fine. We pull back and then blast off again. Uh, I will be accumulating more at 46. I'll probably put in some buy orders there. Um, I bought a little bit yesterday when we were down like 48,000, but just a little bit. Again, taking nibbles, dollar cost average. That's how we make that money. Be patient, think long term. Um, so that's what I'm expecting. And I think one thing that we're starting to see develop right now in the weekly that just caught my eye is this doji candle. Um, what that is, it's an indecision candle. You can tell because it kind of looks like um, this little tea, like a dreidel. That means, you know, the bulls um, aren't pushing up significantly and the bears are failing to push down significantly. So there's not a lot of movement. So uh, we'll see how the weekly turns out. I'll be really interested to see it. If we can fill this gap, and go up to 50,000, close 50,000 or 51,000, I think, you know, up we go. I think from there, 51,000 uh, will break through that, but we need to close a couple days over the 50,000 to really solidify that, in my opinion. Um, four hours, um, nah, but that's all I wanna say. That's all I'll have to say about that. Um, but overall, I think we're in really good position. I think Bitcoin is doing really, really well. Even though we got rejected at 50,000, uh, we saw that happen at the 40,000 as well. Keep in mind, I mean, when we got to 52,000, we got mega rejected about a 10% um, decrease right there, a 10% rejection from 42 to 37. But as you can see, we blasted right back up. Um, right now, it's not as harsh. The rejection is not nearly as harsh. We're holding 49,000. Um, which tells me that we're, we're really flipping 49 into support, I think. Or the 48,000, 49,000 uh, region is a good area of support within that area. Uh, before we go into Cardano, Crypto Fear and Greed Index at 79, same as yesterday. Uh, a month ago, we were at 27, so good to see that overall. Uh, and then the market cap at $2.14 trillion, Bitcoin closing in at that $1 trillion market cap. Cardano people, I got a DM the other day. Should I buy Cardano? Should I invest in Cardano? Should you invest in Cardano and should I buy Cardano for a quick buck or two separate conversations? Right now, Cardano is on a tear at $2.87, um, beating all time highs on the daily. I think we touched 295 yesterday. So we're, we're just smashing through all time highs with Cardano and I don't see this stopping anytime soon. Um, there's a lot of excitement and a lot of positive energy flowing towards Cardano, especially with the, there's, there's th two big positive catalysts going on. One, smart contracts coming in on September 12th which is gonna be huge. We're gonna see a major launch of DEXs and dApps being built on Cardano. That's gonna be a big day. Another thing too is that we have the Cardano Summit in the middle of September. Uh, two big things, and I saw a tweet the other day where someone was saying, you know, is there any uh, conversations or has there been any active development regarding Cardano's implementation with like US governments and things like that? And like Charles Hawkins, uh, Hoskinson, the, the founder of Cardano, like kind of alluded it to it and he's like, well, tune in to the summit, wink. Um, so we could see Cardano going higher than we expect. But should you buy Cardano now? Two things you need to keep in mind is, you know, are you looking to invest or trade? If you are holding or looking to hold Cardano for the long haul, I'm talking for eight, 10 years, $2.80 in 10 years or eight years even, is gonna be cheap. 
It's gonna be so, so cheap. Getting in now is going to be cheap, right? But I think you can get in cheaper. I think there will be a pullback at some time and you'll be able to get a better entry price. Now, if you're looking to develop your position now, let's say you have like a thousand dollars, maybe consider putting a very small portion of it, of it now. Let it write out. If you make some awesome gains, maybe consider taking profits. Let it write down and then re-enter at a better position. If not, dollar cost average in. Now you can dollar cost average once a month and maybe it'll be down a little bit from a month from now. Maybe at the end of September, Cardano is $2.50 or $2.25. Bring your average cost down. Now Cardano in a month, that's after smart contracts and Cardano Summit. Cardano might be like four or five dollars. Um, so you're gonna be developing your price upwards. So think about what your risk tolerance is and what your pain tolerance is because you know what? Bitcoin could, I mean Cardano could be going to the moon. It could go up five to six dollars, you know? It could probably 2x from here. With the bull run, with the energy, with the enthusiasm, it could 2x from here. Um, which is a good amount of money made. Is it as good as when you could have bought it at, I don't know, a dollar? No, not at all. You would be making 6x, 7x. Um, so you can make a pretty penny, but you have to manage your risk. Man you have to have risk management. Make sure you have stop loss and make sure you don't lose money. Uh, make sure you know when to get in and when you're going to get out. You have to keep a, an eye on it. I personally would advise to wait. Um, if you are looking to buy Cardano, wait a little bit for a better position. If you are looking to make a quick buck, swing trade this and hold it and exit out pretty quickly, by all means, if you know how to do that, by all means, but I'm not good at that. <laughs> I am not a trader. I rather invest in something, ride it out and take my profits along the way. That is me. So make sure when you're doing this, know what you're doing, Make sure you're not holding bags. Make sure that you know when you want to make profits. Don't get greedy and then know when to walk away. If you're looking to invest, any time is a good time to buy. A better time to have bought it was at $1.15. A better time to buy it was at 50 cents. This is pretty expensive. 50 cents compared to like $3, that's one, two, three, six X. So should you buy right now? Just, you have to know what you want to do. If you know that you're gonna hold this for a little bit and make some money, sure. If you're looking to invest, I'd say maybe hold off a bit, let things cool down, because look at this. This is just like insane. This is an insanity. Straight upwards movement. I don't buy things when they're hot. That's just me. But if you want to get in, get out by all means. But, um, I think Cardano is going to be a great hole to have for the long term. I think Cardano is going to crush it um, this year, the years to come. I think there's a lot of excitement going on. And once we start to see all the dApps and all the building off of it, man, Cardano is going to be a beast. I really, really do think so. I, I'm really excited about it. But I do think for, for the market cap of 92 billion dollars i think cardano from here could probably hit 200 billion um putting it at a price point of six dollars i think it would probably top at eight dollars which would put it at what 300 billion more or less give or take um i'm not good at math right now uh at 300 billion it would actually be like about nine dollars um so maybe 2.7 275 billion um, but think about how much money that has to be put into this to move it. I mean, look, this is insane already. Almost a hundred billion dollar market cap. Um, anything is possible though. Anything is possible. When we look at other caps, Ethereum is at 388 billion, right? So Cardano would be just behind Ethereum. So to two and a half X from here for Cardano, would put it at 250 billion more or less. That would put maybe Ethereum at like 600, six six thousand uh, dollars in Ethereum, putting it at like 700 billion, almost 800 billion dollars. 
So think about how much money has to be pumped into the market to do that. Yo, crypto is crazy. Anything is possible. I wouldn't doubt it if it did happen. I wouldn't be surprised or shocked if it happened. But just have an idea of your exit strategy and what you want to do with Cardano. If you're investing, I'm investing Cardano. I'm probably going to take profits, but then there's going to be a point where I'll probably buy more. Honestly, like Cardano is just one of those that you should consider holding. Uh, I think it's a great project and I think it's going to be very promising. My only concern <laughs> with Cardano is what if they push back the release date of smart contracts? Could that be catastrophic for it, for the price? Will we see a major a fall down on it? We'll have to see and find out. But everything is looking good for Cardano. I'm excited. I'm making some serious gains of Cardano and I'm going to continue to ride this until until we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens once we get a blow off top. Um, I think we're going to see some really good action. And if Bitcoin continues to go higher and hit new all time highs, the market is going to go insane. So I hope that was helpful um, and informational. Just to, um, manage your risk. Manage your risk. Don't do anything silly. Uh, don't play or don't play with money not, that you're not willing to lose or don't sell at a loss. Um, that's the worst thing you can do. You know, a, a loss isn't a loss until it's been realized, like when you hit the button sell. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know, if you're going to hold a bag, just dollar cost average. That's what I did. You know, my first purchase of Bitcoin was at 57,000 and it was a small purchase, but I bought all the way down, all the way down. And I brought my, my, my average cost of Bitcoin substantially low. And I'm very happy with where it is right now. So uh, have a plan, execute it. Um, whether it's DCAing, uh, managing your risk, selling at you know a profit that you're happy with, uh, but I just don't want to see anyone lose money just because they're chasing green candles. All right, well tune in back in tomorrow. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Give the podcast a five star rating. Share it with your friends. All that good stuff. Um, and we'll see what Bitcoin does tomorrow. I think we're we're gonna see Bitcoin continue to consolidate and hang out around the forty nine thousand dollar mark. Uh, but I'd really love to see Bitcoin, you know, get back into 50,000, uh, start seeing some daily closes up there. I think then we'll we'll see some really exciting price action right after that. Have a good day, everyone. Peace.